ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಅಜಂ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪಂ ನಿರಾಕಾರಮೇಕಂ ನಿರಾನಂದಂ ಆನಂದಂ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಗುಣಂ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಂ ನಿರೀಹಂ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮರೂಪಂ ಗಣೇಶಂ ಭಜೇಮ ಟೀಮ್ ಪರಂ ವೇದಾಂತ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ಥರ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ವರ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ವರ್ಸ್ ಎ ವಾಮ್ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು trust you have been able to revisit the six shlokas covered in the previous session and gained a better clarity a recap of these verses will be presented by shrimati aruna the next five shlokas of chapter 6 numbering 20 to 24 will be covered by our team of speakers comprising dr netravati shri venkatesh prasad shrimati vani baskar dr satyanarayana and ms viksha and our revered teacher dr timappa hegde sir will break together these verses with his insights after each presentation the presentations are followed by chanting from our little girl arumi shankar to help us to get in tune with our understanding let us now transport ourselves to krishna's realm beginning with the recap over to you aruna ma'am hari om the sixth chapter continues on the state of the mind atma samyama yoga and verse 14 and 15 are descriptive of the antaranga uh, sadhana discipline which is completely internal and has to be observed before meditation so verse 14 is a very powerful description of the condition of the mind that is necessary in order to meditate and focus on the absolute bhagwan krishna here talks about mano nigraha and swami parmarthananda has listed two types of disturbances of the mind and has interpreted this verse as giving us solutions for those disturbances the first has to do with the past all regrets anger and irritations are normally there but at the time of meditation when the mind is quiet all these thoughts will surface the way to deal with them is to learn from past experiences consider them as being necessary for inner growth and accept the past as the will of the lord the second type of disturbance is regarding the future the anxiety that one feels about the future is a hindrance to meditation and for this swami ji ad- advocates surrender to the lord therefore giving up the regrets of the past and the anxiety of the future prashant atma what a great relief it is a relaxed mind that can focus on meditation and be in the present then bhagwan mentions brahmachari vrata a group of disciplines that a student of the scriptures must follow in order to get maximum benefit out of the study at the time of meditation a person should be a temporary mental sanyasi and cut off all other relations other than that with the scriptures and the guru and god with such a relaxed detached in- integrated mind a person can sit in meditation machitto fix the mind on god and matparaha make god the goal of the meditation so verse 15 is continuing the thought on the meditation and bhagwan says that this practice of antaranga sadhana should be consistent and continued for a long time the mind that is the thought must be fixed on the lord evam as explained in the verse 14 in this verse bhagwan is talking about arupa dhyana or the highest form of meditation meditate upon the very form of atma atma sansthana manakritva this is the type of meditation which is purely advaitic and this has to be practiced with yatamanasa self restraint as a result of this meditation the mind becomes more peaceful mat sansthana shantim adhigachati peace the source of which is the lord comes upon the seeker and this is also known to be a jeevan mukta so verses 16 and 17 in these two verses bhagwan has reverted to the bahiranga sadhana or general disciplines which must be followed throughout the day the crux of this is to follow the path of moderation never over indulge in anything nor be on a path of deprivation moderation bhagwan krishna has described in three spheres of uh, daily life they are in eating activity and sleep regarding eating ati ashnata yoga nasti the one who overeats cannot succeed in spirituality in fact bhagwan has given very specific uh, instructions as to how much of the stomach should be filled with what kind of food 
And so Bhagwan wants this, has the same um, uh, discipline uh, for activities, yukta cheshtasya karma, so not overdoing it. And the same goes for sleep, not sleeping too much, not sleeping too little. Such, for such a person, meditation is a peaceful state. And in this process, the sorrows are destroyed. So verse 18 is a very, very important verse that actually talks about the process of Vedantic meditation, Dhyana Swarupam, and then Dhyana Phalam, the culmination of this process. The steps followed are Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. Before getting into this, it is important to note that the preparation for Dharana is following the process of Ashtanga Yoga, Yama and Niyama, that is Bahiranga Sadhana, and then Asana, Pranayama and Pratyahara, that is Antaranga Sadhana. So what is this Dharana? Dharana is withdrawing the mind from the world, the body-mind complex, and anything that is Anatma. So mental activity is only in the spiritual field. Sarva Kame Nihas Priha. Then, then comes dhyanam, that is retaining the mind in that state for a long, long time as much as possible. This will lead to samadhi. So we have the savikalpa samadhi where the division between the subject and object is there and there is effort. And finally, there is the nirvikalpa samadhi, which is the destination where the mind is dissolved in Brahman and there is no effort, it just, it just is. Next slide, please. So verse 19 describes the state of mind in Atma Dhyanam of a person who has done this. Bhagwan has likened it to a lamp which is kept in an enclosed space and doesn't flicker. Similarly, the restrained controlled mind of a yogi practicing Dhyana Yoga does not waver. It remains steadfast. The flame has been compared to a thought and like the flame is enclosed by something the mind, the thought is enclosed and steady with the help of bhakti and vairagyam. That is our destination. This is the dhyana phalam. Thank you. Hari Om. Thank you, Aruna. That was a nice uh, summary of all the verses that we studied in the last class. And in these verses that we just explained, we had vahiranga sadhana, the general preparation, antaranga sadhana, what we need to do just before meditation. And we have come to the actual process of meditation. Very relevant to be able to understand the verses that we are going to study today. Sada Shiva Samaram Bham Shankara Charya Madhyamam Asmada Charya Pariyantam Vande Guru Param Param Om. Today's topic will be on Vedantic meditation or Nidityasana. What is the object of meditation? And what are the benefits that we are going to have by doing meditation? To recap our understanding, Vedantic meditation is a method by which the knowledge that we have gathered through Shravanam and Mananam is now going to be assimilated. Adi Shankara in his Brahma Sutra Bhashyam has said that knowledge can take place only through Guru Shastra Upadesha. The actual verse is like this. He says, Vedanta Vakyad Eva Atma Jnanam Kudati. So therefore, meditation is not a method to gain knowledge or to gain any Brahman experience. Whatever we have studied already through our previous classes of Jnana Yoga, we now internalize, we assimilate, and so that we will be able to have the full benefit of this knowledge. Otherwise, we have only knowledge, but there is no transformation. We all know that it is only the assimilated knowledge that can make a difference, just like it is not the amount of food that you eat, but the amount of food that is digested and assimilated and given to the system. This is often quoted that Swami Chimayananda once heard from a disciple who said that uh, I have gone through 10 Upanishads. He said, very good, but how many Upanishads have gone through you? It is not how much we have studied, but what we have internalized. With this background, we are now looking at what is the object of meditation. 
most of our practices of meditation and including the sixth chapter has been based on Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. The opening verse or the second verse of Patanjali Yoga Sutras goes as Yogascha Chitta Vritti Nirodha. With this understanding we have that the essence of yogic meditation is to have a state of mind in which there are no thoughts at all. So based on this, we will be able to understand that in when we come to Vedanta, we have two forms of meditation. One is called Upasana, and one example of Upasana is Mantra Japa. This is generally given, to, given by Acharyas in the beginning before a person comes into Jnana Yoga. These mantra japa is a wonderful form of meditation to be able to have greater control on the greatest asset we have, that is our mind. This is done in a very formal ceremony. The guru will meet you uh, and then well before the guru gives you the mantra, the guru finds out who is your ishta devata and based on your ishta devata. Because this form of meditation is done on the form. If your Ishta Devata is Lord Shiva, the mantra sometimes or often given is Om Namah Shivaya. The Guru will tell you exactly how to chant it and how to use the Japa Mala uh, when you chant it. If Rama is your Ishta Devata, this is a very, very powerful mantra, also called the Taraka Mantra. The Taraka Mantra is something that helps you to go across. Shri Rama, Jaya Rama, Jaya Jaya Rama, to be re repeated along with the mantra japa. This mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Another very powerful mantra, and this is popularized by the ISKCON group. There is another powerful mantra, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. And in the Buddhist tradition, there is this very beautiful mantras like Om Mane Padme Hum, very loaded in meaning, but Om and Hum help us to come into silence. The money represents the jewel, that is the Atma, we, we can interpret from Vedantic. Padme is the flower that blooms of a body mind that comes and goes. There is another very beautiful mantra in the Buddhist tradition, which uh, Gautama Buddha himself has given to Sariputra. And in that Hridayam Sutra, Gautama Buddha praises that mantra. Before he gives this mantra, he says, this is the mantra of mantras. We have heard it in our other classes. And the mantra goes like this, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam, Gate, Bodhi, Swaha. Now, by going on chanting these mantras for a number of hours, it has to be done both in the morning, both in the evening. To busy people like us, it looks like a real waste of time. But right now, I realize how important these things are. Even now, even as we are in Jnana Yoga, we need to do two forms of meditation. The one form of meditation is Upasana Mantra Japa. I would suggest we do this Upasana Mantra Japa in the mornings and the Vedantic meditation, which I'm going to speak about next that we will be doing maybe in the evening. What do we meditate on in Vedantic meditation? I have taken a verse from Manisha Panchakam. Although these are not Shrutis, these are not from the Vedas, but these are based on the Vedas and they are so poetic and they are so loaded. So many of the words and verses from Adi Shankara are very useful for Nidityasana. That means now I memorize these verses. These, these verses are there in my mind. I internally go on chanting and allow that meaning, Sashvan, Nashwaram, Eva, Vishwam, Akilam, Nischitya, Vacha, Guru. What did the Guru tell, tell me? Nityam, Brahma, Nirantaram, Vibrushata all the time meditate on that Nityam Brahma. So use these words and this is Vedantic meditation. In Vedantic meditation, we try to internalize Brahma Satyam Jagan Nitya through various verses where you declare that I am the reality. 
everything else that I see and experience is of a lower order of reality. And whatever happens to the lower order of reality cannot affect me because I am of the nature of permanent peace, security, and happiness. So using a variety of verses that you would like, meditate on them for minimum 20 minutes, if not, if you have time, much more longer. So we have this mantra, Mano Buddhi Hankara Chittani Nama. So what we do, because we are so used to identifying with the body, when we sit in meditation, we need to tell ourselves the central message of all Vedanta is, I am not this body. I am not my mind. I am not this ahankara. I am not all my memories. Once I say I am not this body, then who am I? The teaching is chidananda rupaha shivoham shivoham. I am of the nature of sat, chit, and ananda. When I bring this to my mind, this is dharana. When I keep this in my mind constantly, that becomes dhyana. When I get absorbed, when I get lost into this, when there is no distinction between the object of meditation and the meditator that comes into a state of samadhi. The object of all Vedantic meditation is to internalize this, that we are not human beings with an occasional spiritual experience, but the other way around. We are spiritual beings. Uh, we are spiritual beings who have forgotten our true nature and we think we are ordinary human beings. That distinction is what we are trying to get. In today's class, we will see some seven important benefits. The first is to realize that in meditation, I develop a very quiet mind. I realize that in this quiet mind is not a mind without thoughts, but it is with Vedantic thoughts. In fact, it is because of Vedantic thoughts, I'm able to have a quiet mind. In this quiet mind, I realize and I recognize that I am this Atma. I have made a shift from the body to the Atma. The discovery that I am that gives such an amount of joy, such an amount of Purnatvam or Ananda that no experiential happiness can match that state that you get from the idea that I am ananta or limitlessness. Once I am convinced about that, this becomes the tattva nishta. And today's verses, you will have a wonderful cycle example. That means once I know who am I, I may be in and through all forms of activity, vyavahara, where people may insult me, where people may hurt me, but I'm not going to be affected because now it has become my nature and this is called a Sahaja Samadhi. Those who do meditation regularly realize that this accomplishment that you have understood through Vedanta and through Nidityasanam is the highest ever. I don't have to boast it publicly, but now I know that no worldly accomplishment is as great as this accomplishment of the discovery of who I am. And once I know who I am, does any problem in the world really affect me? Of course, there is a feeling of what, but internally I tell to myself, so what? Externally, I may show that I am upset, but internally I will know what I am. And finally, Dr. Satyanarana will explain this Dukkha Samyoga Viyoga. I will touch on this after he has explained because this is a very key word. Gaudapada Acharya talks that when we get into Vedantic meditation, there, must, there will be a kind of a joy, a kind of an intoxication that comes, which he calls Rasaswada. Don't get too attached to the joy of meditation. Meditation is to internalize who I really am and to see that 24 hours or throughout my waking life, I am Aham Brahmasmi is the exclamation from every part of my being. With that understanding, let us look into these verses which are talking about all that I have summarized so far. Dr. Mitra, please. Namaste. Hari Om Shri As sir explained, there are two types of Samadhi, Savikalpa Samadhi and Nirvikalpa Samadhi. In Nirvikalpa Samadhi, there is a deliberate effort is not there. 
I as a separate entity is forgotten and I become one with the setup. This absorption where I forget the surroundings, this self-forgetfulness is called nirvikalpa samadhi. In this, the mind is like the non-wavering, non-flickering flame. This absorbed mind is called as nirvikalpaka samadhi or atma swarupam or aham purnasmi, nitya or chidananda rupa, shivoham shivoham. That is, I am free from all dualities. In nirvikalpaka samadhi, absorption of a Vedantic meditator is called yoga and Krishna describes that yoga by giving seven descriptions or seven features of this samadhi. In this 20th verse, two descriptions of the state of samadhi is given, which will be explained. The verse, Yatro paramate chittam niruttam yoga sevaya Yatra chaivatmanatmanam Pashyanatmani tushyati The meaning of the first line is, one should know that to be in samadhi, where in the mind is restrained by the practice of meditation. Uparamate means mind is quieted. In the second line, wherein one perceives the Atma with a pure mind and rejoices in the Atma. So let us see the definitions in the next slide. The first definition, Chitta Uparamanam or total tranquility of mind or total relaxation of mind. The word samadhi is derived as samadhihi yasmin saha. Sama means equanimous, tranquil, like a waveless lake. A lake when there is no breeze outside. A lake without a ripple. Manasa sarovara. A vast, blue, beautiful, cool lake like the mind of a jnani. And how is the mind tranquilized? By a special exercise, chittam niruddham. The mind is withdrawn from the entire anatma prapancha, withdrawn from the world, from the relationships, all the worldly roles I play, the husband status, wife status, father or mother status. Each role I play has a set of problems. So do not be any one of them. This is called withdrawing. Niruddham means restrained, disciplined mind. And what is the discipline of the mind? The mind's movement in anatma is restrained because mind's tendency is to graze in the anatma like the cow grazing all over. That is why it is called pashu. So the mind constantly grazes in anatma and this anatma grazing mind is restrained. How do you do that? Yoga Sevaya, by practicing the Ashtanga Yoga, especially designed for this purpose. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara Sevaya. These five stages called Antaranga Bahiranga Sadhananis. By practicing that, the restrained mind becomes Uparamate, that is calm. It enjoys inner silence. In the next slide, we see the second definition of Samadhi, Atmanam Pashyan. Silencing the mind, you will get temporary tranquility, but not Vedantic tranquility. And therefore, having silenced the mind, we have to bring the Vedantic teaching. Mind is not passive. Mind has got Vedantic thoughts. And this alone, Krishna says, Atmanam Pashyan. One should see the Atma as revealed by the Guru during the Shravanam of Vedanta. In his mind, he has to see the Atma, which means he has to recollect the teaching. With the help of the mind, he sees the Paramatma in Jivatma. So the final meaning is he claims that I am Paramatma. With the help of the mind, which is purified through Samadhi. Purification here means reduction of Viparita Bhavana. So when a Vedantic student practices Nididhyasanam, for him, the Viparita Bhavana is the impurity, which is nothing but triangular format. And Samadhi Parishuddhena means he gets out of the triangular format mindset 
and invokes the binary format mindset repeatedly. The binary format mindset is, I am not a Jiva, I am Brahman. I happen to be Nitya Mukta Brahman. So finally, in conclusions, in the next slide, the verse describes Dhyana Phalam. The first two benefits of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. First is Chitta Uparamam, total, total tranquility of mind. And second is Atma Darshanam, that is, perceives Atma in the mind as witness of thoughts. With this, the ultimate benefit is Jivatma Paramatma Aikyam. The Jnani achieves a level of satisfaction never achieved with the material objects. And the satisfaction is from within, not from without. Thank you. Thank you, Nitra, for a nice explanation of this verse. And you explained it with a very quiet mind, with a very meditative mind, giving us the full meaning of what this, how your mind is able to withdraw from the anatma. When the mind is able to withdraw from the uparama, means to withdraw. And then you are able to restrain the mind through the practice of yoga, through all the Ashtanga yoga, through the Bahiranga sadhana, for a particular purpose. We are coming here to, for Vedantic purposes. So, Atmanam Atmanam. So, you have to use the mind to discover the Atma. So, there is a play on words. There is one Atma, here is the mind, Atmanam. The other is the Atma to discover. And then to explain the joy, the Tushyati, that fulfillment when you discover that I am that wonderful verse worth meditating on, that in through silence, I'm able to discover my true nature. The next verse will be presented by Vinktesh Prasad. Over to you, Vinktesh. Thank you, sir. Sri Guru Bhjana the entire sixth chapter is devoted to Vedantic meditation closely following the stages of meditation given in the Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali. The Ashtanga Yoga is a gradual elevation of a person towards Samadhi. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is the culmination of this eight-stage process. Krishna has given seven definitions of this Sahaja Samadhi Sthiti. Dr. Netra has beautifully explained the first two definitions. Let's go to the third and fourth in the verse 6.21. As we move on to the next slide, let me chant it. Sukha matyanti kam yatta buddhi grahya matindriyam veti yatra na chaivayam stetas chalati tatvataha. Wherein one appreciates that ananda which is beyond sense organs and which is grasped by the intellect and remaining in which he does not slip from his true nature. Next slide, sir. Atyantikam Sukham, the highest Ananda. Atyantikam means limitless. Sukham means Ananda. Ananda means fulfillment, which is totally different from the experiential sense pleasures. All the experiential sense pleasures are finite in terms of time, space, and quality. Every experiential pleasure is time-bound. That is why people always say, that day I had greatest day, and they use the past tense. Further, there will be qualitative gradation in that experiential pleasure. The other day he sang beautifully, but not today. Whereas this Ananda is totally different. It does not come under experiential pleasure at all. It is limitless Ananda. Krishna says, buddhi grahyam. Buddhi means knowledge or intellect. It is an ananda born of knowledge, born of wisdom, that I am Purna, I was Purna, and I will ever be Purna. So, ananda born of knowledge is permanent because knowledge can never be displaced or shaken by time or by any worldly experience. And it is that Purnatva, that fulfillment born of wisdom is called Atyantikam Sukham, which is Buddhigrahyam and only Atindriyam means that it is beyond sense pleasures. And therefore, 
the third definition of samadhi is atyantikam sukha krishna uses the word vetti as he knows the pleasure indicating the ananda is in the form of knowledge or wisdom next slide sir <clears throat> then comes the fourth definition in the second line yatra ayam sthitah na tatpatah chalati remaining in this in this absorption or abiding in this atma one does not deviate into anatma because he has trained to abide in the atma like a person who learns cycling and the one who helps you learn cycling gives the rules and regulations how to hold the handlebar and how, look straight and how to sit straight samam kaya shirogrivam and then you observe all the rules and comfortably fall with all the attention you again fall but after you practice for some days you become cycle nishtha once you have become cycle nishtha you can take the busiest of streets and ride comfortably next slide sir a person who practices like this will never get out of this knowledge even during intense transactions in life in the worst crisis and any time this is called tatvanishtha therefore tatvatah tatva here means atma chalati means deviate na chalati means one does not deviate from his higher nature in fact thereafter the life becomes a drama just as a person plays different roles in a drama but does not forget what he is in his green room in this samadhi sthiti one does not deviate from the higher nature even during transactions this is sahaja samadhi like the cyclist who rides without paying attention to the center of gravity of cycle here nani is the in the center of gravity of himself therefore the fourth the definition is tatvanishtha or sthita pragna to remind you of the second chapter remaining three definitions will be explained by the coming speakers hari om thank you thank you venkatesh prasad for another excellent explanation of a very loaded verse so let us look at the same verse that venkatesh has explained for us and to see whether all that he said is there sukham atyantikam that is the highest form of sukham the word for this is ananda ananda cannot be translated to happiness sukha can be happiness but ananda is ananta ananda is limitless but only when you know your limitlessness then you this then you experience you don't experience really you know the kind of joy or the kind of a sense of purnatvam and once you know that you become anchored into this knowledge and therefore in and through all transactions that you may be going through you are not going to fall you become a nishta that atyantika sukha that which never comes and goes which is beyond all senses but yet through my intellect through my mind i can claim it as myself i know and once i am anchored into this i can interact in all kinds of situations in the world and still not be affect by, affected by it because now i have become a nishta i have become anchored in this as nicely given in that cycle example verse 22 vani please hari om shri guru bhyo namah the verse is m labdva chaparam labham manyate na adhikam tatah yasmin stito na dukhena gurunaapi ichalute the word meaning is labdva is having gained which cha is an tatah adhikam better than that aparam adar labham is gained na manyate does not think yasmin in which stitah is established gurunaapi dukhena even by great sorrow na vichalyate is not affected so the meaning of the verse is attaining which one does not consider any other attainment or accomplishment to be superior than that and remaining in that knowledge he is not shaken by any great calamity or a great sorrow so when the mind mastered by the practice of meditation 
abides in atma he does not slip away from his true nature his true nature is purnaha that is absolute happiness which is beyond this purnaha is beyond the sense perception and it is known by the buddhi it is rooted there and when when you are rooted in this knowledge one never moves away from the truth of oneself he abides in the knowledge that he is purnaha he lacks nothing the essence of the vedas and the message of the gita is that you are purnaha pujya swami dayananda saraswati says the vision of the vedas is that you are the whole you are purnaha that is you are everything which simply implies that you are not the small individual ego or the personality or the mind or the content of the mind you identify with you are not that you are the whole so when the ego is surrendered you are purnaha purnaha he is he does not desire anything he is happy and enjoys whatever he has so yam labdva having gained this purnatvam gaining here is you know the that is the knowledge aparam labam all the other gains or accomplishments in life are not good gains na adhikam manate that is they are not good they are avoidable one can go without these gains there is no other gain better than this gain of purnatva because every other gain has a limitation and atma gnanam or self knowledge is limitless it is anantam or anandaha which is the true nature of oneself its swarupa is atyantika sukha atyantika sukha is sukha which is independent it does not depend on anything to be happy because atma is everything therefore the person discussed in this verse does not even think that there is any other gain all accomplishments or gains are insignificant when compared to the gain of self knowledge it is atyantika labaha that is highest gain in front of which all other gains are insignificant or too small yesmin sataha after discovering this knowledge that you are purnaha that fact then what is this is the true nature of oneself and he remains in this and abides in this atma tattva dukkena guruna api na vichalyate guru has several meanings and here guru means big or heavy that is opposite of lagu light or small here guru is used as an adjective not as a noun so having gained the knowledge of purnatvam the person is not shaken even by the worst tragedy in life and nothing can shake him he knows all things except this self knowledge or subject to arrival and departure that is in second chapter we have the verse agama paino nityaha so it comes and goes all the anitya vastus comes and goes so abiding in this knowledge of purnatvam changes his attitude of what to so what staying in this atma tattva gives total freedom from sorrow and that is atyantika dukkena nivritti hari om sir thank you so much thank you vani for giving us a very nice explanation of another very important and a very loaded verse yam labdva what is that what is that attainment this is one of my favorite sufi stories i have shared this many times of a group of sufi saints who had crossed the desert were they extremely hungry and tired they were looking for food and a certain rich man was hosting a banquet they approached the place looking for food and the man the host was welcoming all the guests and he sees a group of strangers and he asked the leader of them who are you i do not know who you are suddenly it occurred to him but i know myself and it and he shared this thought to himself how unfortunate it would be if the whole world knew me but i did not know myself those who dwell into the path of spirituality will one day discover that this discovery of knowing our true nature is the highest accomplishment ever yam labdva having discovered that you will say aparam labam adikam there is no other accomplishment greater than that that is why we need to be able to invest whatever time we have right now in the pursuit of this knowledge because before it is too late before our body begins to not able to pursue this let us be able to come and discover our true nature and once you are anchored yes means titah once you are anchored in this 
na bichal bichayake which you will never be shaken by dukkena guruna pi guru here means heavy even the greatest form of sorrows what happens externally to the whole world you will say what but internally you will say so what because you know this is the nature of anatma sashvan nashvaram eva vishvam akilam this whole world around me including my body mind is going to decay and perish right in front of me but i remain as an illuminator absolutely unaffected by the so called tragic events around me because i know that i am asangaha asangoha once i know my true nature yam ladva once you have discovered your true nature then if anything happens to this body or to the world around me it will not affect me the next another beautiful verse will be explained to us by dr satyanarayana over to you dr satyanarayana om shri guru bhyo namaha the verse goes like this tam vidya dukha samyoga viyogam yoga sannitam sanischaye na yoktavyo yogo nirvinna chetasa the meaning is one should know that state which is dissociation from association with sorrow to be known as samadhi dhyana yoga leading to that should be practiced with firmness and with tireless mind lord krishna has been talking about vedantic meditation as a means of assimilating self knowledge next slide sir it has been clearly pointed out that meditation cannot give self knowledge self knowledge has to take place from guru upadesha shravanam gives self knowledge meditation is prescribed for internalizing and assimilating the knowledge which has already been gained next slide when we eat food what nourishes our body is not the amount that we eat but the amount that we digest digested food nourishes the body and not the eaten food persons with absorption problem will have malnutrition in spite of eating similarly what we listen does not bless us what is going to bless us is what we assimilate it is not how much geeta we have gone through it is how much geeta has gone through us i repeat it is not how much we have heard or read geeta it is how much we have assimilated or how much we have transformed that blesses us and therefore vedantic meditation is purely for assimilation of this knowledge and the assimilation is accomplished by dwelling upon the teaching that i have received in fact shravanam replayed is nididhyasanam next slide we have seen that nididhyasanam can be divided into three stages dharana dhyana and samadhi one western author has put it beautifully we are not human beings having a spiritual experience but we are spiritual beings having a human experience means i do not see i do not seek spiritual experience i want to own up the fact that i am spiritual being all the time samadhi is culmination in total absorption i am sachidananda swarupa and this absorption alone is called nirvikalpa samadhi which is yoga phalam we have seen from verse 20 krishna defining yoga phalam by giving six features and this verse is the seventh and final definition of yoga phalam key word in this verse is dukkha samyoga viyogam which is dissociation from association with sorrow never seek mystic pleasures mystic pleasures arrive and go it is subject to time therefore krishna says infinite ananda is one which never arrives if it should be infinite ananda it should never arrive at a place time or in a particular condition infinite ananda is possible only if it is already here and now next slide health is natural whereas disease is a incidental thing which we have acquired a doctor can never give you health no doctor need to give you health a doctor can only remove the obstacle to natural health when a doctor removes that intruder you have come back to your natural state similarly ananda is also our nature sorrow is something that we have acquired by wrong thinking and misconception 
by vedanta we are only removing the sorrow by atma gnanam samadhi is remaining in the natural state of purnatvam samadhi is thus dissociation from association with sorrow happiness happens to be our swarupam in the second line in the of the verse shri krishna states that dhyana yoga leading to samadhi should be practiced with firmness and with a tireless mind in next couple of verses he then goes on to explain how we must practice meditation hari om thank you dr satyanarayana for a nice explanation of this very key verse and if this verse is understood uh, then uh, we need to understand what is this dukkha samyoga the yoga i was explaining that when we wake up in the morning uh we identify with the body and the moment we identify with the body we experience all kinds of limitations and that is the nature of the process we are born with ignorance but once we come to this path of vedanta vedantic acharyas through the guru and shastra tell us that this is our ignorance we realize that i am someone other than the body and through this understanding we need to disidentify from this body and mind and see that this body and mind is only an instrument and how do i do it i have to do it with great conviction with a great sense of enthusiasm with a mind that is not a uh, nirvina chetasa a mind that is full of enthusiasm and to be anchored in this understanding that i am someone other than the body the more i identify with the body then dukkha sam yoga will be there the more through vedantic understanding i disidentify from the body i come to dukkha sam yoga the yoga and this should be a nischaya gnanam and this should be done with great amount of enthusiasm uh so as uh, dr satyanarayana also explained sorrow is unnatural but through this understanding of samadhi we understand all these are something that i illuminate my real nature is that of purnatvam my real nature is chidananda rupah shivoham shivoham the concluding verse for today will be explained by viksha over to you viksha संकल्प प्रभवान कामान स्त्यक्त्वा सर्वन अशेषतः मन मनसा वेंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम्य समंततः इन दिस श्लोक श्री कृष्णा गिव्स अस अ मेथड फॉर डीलिंग विद वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट चैलेंजेस इन मेडिटेशन व्हिच इज अनकंट्रोल्ड डिजायर्स ही सेज that in order to fulfill the goal of keeping the mind established in the self we have to completely withdraw the mind from all sense objects and tackle desires at their root next slide doctor as we have seen in the second chapter a thought is born as soon as we begin daydreaming over the object person or situation towards which we have raga which is attraction or dvesha which is hatred the more time we spend thinking about the object the more force is gathered by the thought just like a snowball gathering momentum it is this overthinking about objects that we like or hate that has to be corrected only this self discipline will stop desires in their tracks but to pull this off we have to follow a multi step approach first we have to be aware of our thinking process so that we can stop the thoughts the minute it starts it is just like stopping any phone call or outside interference when we are in an important meeting next we have to apply this technique to all types of thoughts not just to objects that we hate finally we have to constantly examine our likes and dislikes so that we can develop dispassion or vairagya towards them next slide doctor 
our sense organs are programmed to rush towards object that objects that they like and rush away from things that they dislike when they rush they drag our mind along causing distraction and agitation that is why it is advised to meditate in a clean and quiet place so that the sense organs cannot come in contact with anything and distract us gradually as we get more proficient in meditation we should ensure that the sense organs do not take in strong impressions that can pop up later during meditation for example if we love to eat oranges then we should be careful not to eat an orange just before meditation otherwise our mind will keep thinking about the orange we are aware of the hierarchy of our personality we know that mind is higher than the senses and the intellect is higher than the mind what does it mean for the meditator it means that even though the mind is hard to control our intellect has the power to control it in other words the meditator should use the intellect to control the mind now how can we achieve this next slide doctor during meditation we can withdraw the mind using the intellect we need to have an intellect that has read and heard about the eternal essence it understands that any thought other than i am the self does not have a place in meditation each time we we have an unwanted thought that comes to our mind we should use the intellect to gently but firmly shift focus from that unwanted thought and put our mind back into the main thought of i am the self or i am ishwara thank you hari thank you biksha for another nice explanation of an important verse which talks about the problems in meditation here because of our mind we have that very famous verse mana eva manushyanam karana bandha moksha the mind can be the cause of my bondage but if i am able to understand and if i am able to train my mind through the same mind i am able to discover brahma vidya and what brahma vidya says atman eva atmana tushta and once i dis discover my true nature then sankalpa prabhavan kama styatva sarvan asheshata completely let us go through all these verses if i have to sit in meditation i need to be able to overcome all desires and as uh, diksha said if there is something that you like those thoughts will come to your mind and they will interrupt this mind of mine of all of us is not from this life it has got impressions from various past lives there are strong vasanas or strong impressions and because of these impressions we are forced and driven in a particular way and that is why our mind can put us down now how do we train through vedantic knowledge we realize i am someone other than the mind i am the one who is able to use this mind and therefore i have been able to vini vinyamya i am able to control my mind and if i am able to control my mind and i am able to quiet we are not able to get the full uh, meaning of this verse because this verse has to be combined with the verses that will be coming in the next class in the next class you will hear this word shanai shanai slowly slowly dheere dheere in the next class we will be seeing all these more beautiful verses how slowly and slowly meditation is a learned process we have got brahma vidya but a brahma vidya has to be internalized we have to practice meditation in the beginning of the class we make a lot of adoration and respect to our gurus our gurus are the finished products who are years of meditation and all of us can reach that through meditation shanai shanai and in the next class we have another verse which talks about the chanchala mind and therefore how to bring the mind back then there are three verses which talk about the greatness of our true nature the greatness of a yogi and finally the last verse says 
Once you're able to identify your true nature, you see yourself in everyone. And that is the glory of this beautiful chapter. So please come prepared for the next chapter or for the next set of five verses in the next class. We will conclude with another little young participant who's going to chant these verses for us. Over to you, Aruni. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya yatra chaivatmanatmanam pashyanatmani sushyate sukhamatyantikam yatat buddhigashamati indriyam veti yatra na chaivayam Hitashchalati tatvataha yam labdhva cha param labham manyate nadhikam tataha yasmin sthito na dukhena guru na pivichalyate tam vidya dukha sanyogaha viyogam yoga sangnitam Sanishchayena yoktavyo yogo nirvinna chetasa sankalpa prabhavan kamar shetva sarvana sheshataha manasaivendriya gramam viniyam yasamantataha hari hivom shri guru bhyo namaha Thank you, sir. Oh, what a flawless chanting it was. There's a sense of pride in bringing to you all the rich samskara embedded in these little angels. Thank you, Aruni, for the devotional musical treat. Goddess Sharda, the presiding deity of your place of stay, Shingeri, has blessed you abundantly. Our gratitude to Dr. Timapa, sir, for his enlightening inputs as always. Special thanks to all the speakers for the wonderful explanation of the verses. A special mention of Viksha who drives home the fact that spirituality is innate and one doesn't have to wait to age to take up to scriptural studies. A very reassuring takeaway for today is when a person owns up this Purnatvam of the Atma, I am Purnaha, I am not lacking anything in life, I do not need anything in life to be complete. Then one does not miss anything in life. Kurai vandrum illai. Having owned up this Purnatvam, all other aims and accomplishments and gains become insignificant. Remaining in this natural state of Purnatvam is Samadhi, which is Atyantika Sukham, and happiness happens to be our Swarupam. May we invoke Krishna's blessings to be in this thought and offer our deeds and words till we move on to the next session on Friday, the 24th September 2021 at 6.45 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om.